Welcome to each backyard. It's another beautiful morning. Summer is approaching. It's getting to be. I'm going to need to start to purposefully harvest these mangoes and distribute them. Mango distribution. These mangoes, mangoes will ripen very well on a counter, and although it's a decent size, it's going to get a lot bigger. So these Tommy Atkins, I'm going to let them a little bit longer, but the Hayden tends to get bottom rot, and uh, I can see some of them are actually tree ripening now at this point. These are a little bit more irregular in their sizing, as you can see. Oh, here's a ripe one. Oh, it's not completely, no, it's not totally, it's getting there. It's almost ready to go. And they get that real fire engine red thing going on. That's when I know they're almost there. It takes usually about three or four days to counter ripen them. So good practice is to start picking the unripened mangoes and phase them in because extends your mango eating phase. Got a project or two I need to do. Jack ended up getting cut by the edge of this chicken wire yesterday. The edge that I made here is just enough that if you brush against it, it can scrape you. So I've got to come up with some kind of solution for the edge here, but so far so good. Been using this coop I built. I'm pleased with it. I'm gonna try to clean up the camera lens. Very pleased with it. Just added a little more bedding to it. Where are those little chicky doos in the rabbit run? They just went around the yard exploring. Where are they? Are they in here? Oh, they're not in here. Oh, I see. They're all the way on the other side of the yard. Yeah, so the chicken's running around and happy. Another thing I need to do is deal with this rabbit situation. Rabbits are great, but the top of this cage, I have a tarp over just for to provide constant shade. Um, but I'm going to take the roof off, which is flat, and remove it. Anywhere where you collect water, you're going to have additional mosquitoes. And the mosquitoes are present enough. By the way, if you have any effective mosquito repellent ideas, let me know to include DEET and all the rest. I, I'm interested in people's experience dealing with mosquitoes. Lately, I've looked at it as a philosophical exercise, the mosquito bite thing, which is to just allow it to occur and uh, try not to itch them, just be itchy. But I wouldn't mind finding a more effective solution. There's Sirius Black, the baby rooster. Are you guys in my carrot patch again? Oh, carrot patch doesn't look so good. <laughs> Gotta say, I enjoy it though. I enjoy watching, I can easily, easily Put up some chicken wire here and reduce the impact of the chickens and I'm gonna do that soon that's another little project never a shortage of projects my first the alpha pigeon pea that I planted is continuing to do well I've now clipped all of the ends it's very rigid very rigid stems which I love I clip the ends and growing lots of additional shoots so that's good experimenting with the pigeon pea to see best ways to grow it. This one I've got tree formed and I'm going to try to maximize the tree formed fruit potential. Have it up on a stake here. This one I've grown as a bush and I've been making videos about these but as you follow the channel hopefully you can see kind of the growth rate and 
and what it's like. I've never grown these before to let you know, but uh, since they're such a useful plant and so highly edible every part of it that uh, I just decided I had to have it. Now, what I realized is the rabbits love to eat this. So I, all of the cuttings I took off of here, I fed to the rabbits. These are the kind of plants I think you want to consider having in your yard if you are getting into permaculture, getting into creating food producing systems in your backyard. Even if you don't feed it to the chickens, you can always chop and drop and return the nutrients to the soil. And I've been doing a lot of that as well. Spent a little time with the compost bins last night. I say this all the time, but I just cannot believe what a bottomless pit compost bins are. I've never done the compost bin thing before, other than piling up stuff in a corner of the yard and forgot about it. But other than that, nothing and couldn't be simpler the method here for the compost bin it's just unrolled animal cage wire you can get at any any you know, Lowe's Home Depot that kind of thing online tractor supply find the best price on it and just unroll it basically and attach it and you got this but I've been consistently jamming almost everything that my yard produces even raking up leaves and not everything, but a lot of what my yard, what I typically put in yard and yard waste, and it is not filled either of these. And I may go with a third. I keep thinking I'll need a third, but then as I put in more and more organic matter, it just continues to compress down. So I think I'm going to have bountiful amounts of high quality dirt in here. I've actually considered to start sprinkling in the rabbit manure into it. Uh, I've already started to put the chicken bedding into it so that's the chicken manure is going in there so this should be some really rich stuff and it leads me to a place in my life where i'm purchasing a pitchfork <laughs> my son jokes with me that we're creating a farm and uh in a way it starts to seem like that a little micro farm that's probably a stretch oh the old sea grape that's really cool. See how red that is? The uh, Native Americans in this area used this plant to dye as dye, to create dyes. Really beautiful. Sea grape. And this is the first year I grew a bunch of these from seeds, sea grape seeds. If you want to see that video, it's on Eat Your Backyard channel. Lots of videos about... If you can see the sea grape finally set fruit. Very exciting. This year we get sea grapes. Pretty happy about that. These are great tree form. They just do very well in the salty air of my region. I've been tree forming this one for years. I aggressively trim these things to get them to the point where they are. You can see this one, uh, it's getting a little close to the power line, so I gotta take that one back. Gotta constantly keep up on this area. Keep it back from the lines. Another thing that's getting ready to grow is the longan. Longan tree is loaded, absolutely loaded with longan fruit, which are something like a lychee. You're familiar with those? If you're not, wow, they're good. And uh, you can see up here, all oh, they're starting to grow, but I can see how many fruit have set, and there's fruit all throughout here. The problem is, it's up high. Did that on purpose with this tree just because uh, the way I trimmed it was intentionally to open up the open up some sunlight here so I started to play around more with the height of trees and undercarriage things things that are in the understory of your 
food forest, herbaceous things like bananas, of course, you know, fitting in very well in the understory. Uh, some palms, you can see I have some dracaenas, of course, but the palms like this one, very long stalked palm. I don't actually know which variety that is. I just grabbed a cutting from a friend and threw it in there, but you know, all of those things, the fig tree is about ready to jump up and go. Keep coming out here to check to find if the figs are ready yet. Not yet. First fig of the year always gets me excited. But we're not there yet. Now we'll be in Thumper, relaxing. Continue to produce <laughs> so much sunflower leaf, seeds, petals. We enjoy these in a lot of ways. And this is the mammoth sunflower. You get a packet of these seeds at any home improvement store for about two dollars and uh, they grow so easily so quickly so reliably the mammoth sunflower yeah so we grow them all the time and we've actually I, I harvest them when they're complete growing and you get these heads like this and that my friends is pure bounty that is great food for the rabbits look oh Penelope's even I see. Or she'll eat the petals. Yeah, we haven't given her a pellet yet this morning. A little snack before we get her. These rabbits are well fed. <laughs> we are a little bit, I'm a little bit concerned about Penelope that we've been feeding her too much. She will just eat and eat and eat. Okay, Thumper, I won't forget about you. Here, I'll try to get them through the... There you go. Yeah, they love the sunflower petals. These are dried now. These little bunnies get a lot of exercise and get a lot of nutrients. They can smell the sunflower from a mile away. They love every part of the sunflower, yeah. And they're eager to get out of the cage. I haven't let them out to exercise yet this morning. Oh, I almost forgot. I have warm tea that I watered the worms last night and I had ooh, as a matter of fact I didn't let the water out I hope now, is it possible to drown worms I think it is I keep thinking that could happen because sometimes I'll fill up the worm thing and not leave the leave the tap open hey, little chicky D's oh look at this this is a I made a YouTube short about this thing. <laughs> I love this. Just a little perch I made out of a fig branch. Hey guys, what do you think? I have mealworms because I have this bucket. But they love it. A natural perch. They were drawn to it right away. I didn't have to show them what to do. Yeah. I have so many buckets because at first I was going to capture the rabbit manure with buckets and of course that idea didn't work because all the manure went in between the buckets. All right, let's see. The moment of truth. Worm tea, vermiculture, permaculture. Watch, this is where I spray putrid worm tea onto my shorts. No, let's not do that. All right. Oh, look at that good stuff. Oh, you know what? Just since this is going to be an internet worm tea experience let's uh lift it up and what i do is i slosh all the slosh it around a little, a little bit to get the good stuff at the bottom in there because look at how black that is that's what you want all full of that good stuff all right let's see what we got oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
that smells absolutely horrible. Which probably means it's incredibly nutritious for the plant. This system's really easy to set up, and I've got plenty of, I've got a video on how to do it. I recommend you do do it. If you're adding this and the high nutrient manures, I believe you're going to win. So I'll just let that train. Oh, look at you, chicky doos. So fascinating to me what they do. That's why I call them chicky doos. What do chickies does? Chickies does, well, first the chicks go out and they roam the yard to their favorite spots, roost a little bit, play a little bit. Then they go into their childhood play zone, which is the rabbit run. Seems like a lot of mornings. And then they seem to now want to come back and go inside the hen house. Of course, they have food. They have water all over the yard, so they don't need to come back for water, but they've got the food. And I've also got, started to add some, I've started to add some supplements. There are a lot of supplements you can get for chickens. I continue to learn about chickens, which I love, by the way, I love learning. Hopefully you do too. But uh, this is actually grit, which is crushed granite. And uh, they need that to aid their digestion. I was wondering if the sand would accomplish the same thing, but uh, you know, it's really cheap to get a bag of this and everybody recommends doing it. They, they need grit in their gizzard. You need grit. You got any grit in your gizzard? I think you're okay. Oh, he's definitely a rooster. <laughs> look at the, look at the crown on that. And we also water down on this level. Plenty of fresh water everywhere. And the other supplement you can get them is a calcium supplement. And the typical one I see is oyster shell. Crushed up oyster shell. And they, it's a tongue twister. Oyster shell. Provides them with, I think, the minerals and so on, calcium and others, to form eggs. So really important once they start cranking out the eggs. Um, I was really fascinated to learn how long it took for a chicken to go from chick to egg producer. Of course, that's well known. And uh, for the first eggs, usually about, they say, five to six months. So these guys are coming up on four weeks old. So another four months, four to five months. I should have copious quantities of eggs. I haven't finished constructing the back area yet. Yeah, Jack said, did you make it like that to fit? No, just two pavers broke and it worked out. But this, this is the zone. Oh yeah. Oh, look at you. Oh, that's Blondie. That's Blondie the chicken. Just eating it. We've got one of those Plymouth Rock for hens just sitting on the ledge there. I'll probably actually keep this open today if it gets super hot. It's supposed to get really hot. They said it was going to get to 100 degrees this week, which is pretty hot. You can see I've, I've screened off the nesting area, the place where the eggs will happen. And so they're never going to poop in there and then what I'll do is add in, I think I'll add in a different kind of bedding to make it, to make it like, you know, hay, something like that in here, to make it so that it's distinctly different for these guys. And then I'm going to place porcelain eggs in the, in the nests that I make once they're ready to lay. And that encourages them, as soon as they see that egg, they just go right in there and lay their own. You can also use golf balls. People use golf balls instead of buying the porcelain eggs, but I mean... If you can, why wouldn't you want to have some porcelain eggs? 
This sounds cool. Yeah, so now I can do the cleanup. The big project is done. I'll get it. Ah, the eastern breezes have already kicked up. What do you know? This morning it was dead calm wind. But as soon as those east breezes here, I'm about four blocks from the ocean, but as soon as those east breezes kick in, and it varies throughout the year, as soon as they kick in, we're nice and cool. I mean, the temperature difference is dramatic right now. It makes it so beautiful. Hmm. These little plants that are growing here are uh, gourds. They're the birdhouse gourds, or I think they're called. Or... Anyway, gourds, we'll see. I planted them here because I'm hoping I can grow them up and around this giant Hawaiian papaya. You can see it's loaded with fruit. I get. It. I need to do a fruit harvest video on that one. You know, really, what happens with these papayas is they're such heavy fruit producers. You see, they've all just got so many papayas, and some of them are chewed into by birds. The birds are constantly eating them. The squirrels are constantly eating them, which I am totally fine with. They're all providing manure in the yard as well. But then, you know, the remnants drop down composts naturally provides a real fertile lush area back here for worms as long as I keep it watered this is worm paradise and those chicky doos love to go back here and find every little bug that's under the leaves you know kick leaves and find all the bugs scurrying they love it and now I tried a grape this year you know the right way to go is to get like a muscadine grape or some kind of grape that is known to do well in Florida I didn't I got this corny variety from Lowe's uh oh, that's the sound of a distressed chicken. Whoa. Interesting. But it immediately died back. And uh, I figured, well, that's the end of that. But then it sprouted back, so we'll see if it gives a little shoot. But that one again, I can trail up you know, any number of these things. Kiefer line continues to do well. Yeah, so a lot going on in the yard. And more to come. This is the time of the year when keeping up with watering is very challenging. But I've been doing my best to come out here and water every day. My wife told me, yeah, our water bill went up by $30. <laughs> oh, yeah, that figures. You know, that water is going to very efficient use back here. The water that we use for uh, general ir irrigation comes from a well. But the water that I use to, to you, know, you see there's always a hose now stretched across the yard to keep everything watered. From the hose is city water. This has been another game changer. I don't know if you have one of these, but the watering wand. Or you can just extend out and water things easily, high pressure, various settings. That's just been incredible. It's like the, you know, mobile water can. There's a setting on here that has exactly like a regular watering can. And uh, especially with this new little fruit, fruit grove. Oops, sorry, I missed some. Especially with this new little fruit grove right here that I planted, this collection of trees. Um, I've been watering them with that wand consistently now for the last two to three months, and it's really paying off. And look at how well this Jamaican cherry is doing. Oh, it's so cool, it's sticky. Mmm, smells so good too. It's a real like, uh, it's really aromatic and it's a sweet, almost slightly pungent smell. And the leaves are very sticky, very soft, delicate leaves. I, I just love this tree and it was out of my life for a while because I... Hey WD-40, good to see you. Let's see if I can...
Oh, that's a great idea to bite out of the backyard. I'm going to, all right, WD-40, I'm going to do that now. Thank you for that awesome idea. Take a bite out of your backyard. Could I take a bite out of my backyard right now? I sure could. But what to do? Oh, give me the idea. All right, let's go deep into the heart of the forest. <laughs> forest might be a stretch, but I... I like the idea of adventure, and I think you can have a little slice of it in your world. Now, you might think this isn't adventurous, but there goes a little lizard. And uh, I've seen back here over the last week black racer snake. They're super cool snakes. Native Florida snake. A... I've actually got to be careful. I cut these Barbados cherry stems here, and they stay rigid for a while. You can put, like I have already, put a stick through the bottom of your flip-flop quite easily. They get these little things that stick out like this that are just broken branches, but it's the base of the branch. And It's not a thorn, but if you step on that, it'll go straight through a, shoot, through a rubber sole. So anyway, the point is, this is a Barbados cherry tree. And <laughs> I don't know if you know much about Barbados cherries. They are very common. You can get them, you can locate them widely. They're used in commercial vitamin C production. And the flavor is something like a cherry starburst, if you've ever had a cherry starburst. Look, they're just loaded. Now they won't count a ripen, so you gotta find the red ones and they, ah, here we go. Here we go. Not totally red, but enough. Now I can see there's about 20 of them way up in the canopy. I've gotta get a ladder situation back here to pick some, but this one is almost all the way ripe. See, I put this, the drill gun into my thumb. Badge of pride. For another one, there didn't seem to be one within pickable range with the camera with the phone in my hand, but I'm gonna give this a try, see how it, it is. Wow, it's so delicious! Now it comes with three little seeds around the inside. Give him a chance. Because, oh, more. More. Oh, nice. I want, some, I want to shake them to come down, but you can see they're just up, just beyond my reach. All right, I'm coming back here with a ladder. But, because that is delicious. Absolutely. Great A. I was like, to, oh, there's my vitamin C pill. But I haven't taken the full dosage. I need to eat about 10 more of those. Now, it's interesting. This pigeon pea I planted here is enduring. How are you going to do? Chickens versus the pigeon pea? They're letting, it, they're letting it live. They chowed my moringa tree. Those little critters. Still wants to come back. I've got some moringa trees here that I just planted from seeds, and I can plant plenty more. But uh, I like the idea that they're edible and delicious. Oh, look at you. You get excited when I come by. <laughs> okay, let's see. Anything? What else is a good one? I I think, I think the mulberries are pretty much all over right now, even though I have ever bearing mulberry trees. They really came in strong this year and then they seem to have backed off. They'll come in again and again and again, but yeah, I don't see any mulberries. Usually that's a reliable. Oh look, more chickens over here. Wow, they're starting to divide the flock. Interesting. Ooh, one thing I love. Or just cherry tomatoes. <laughs> Look at those cherry tomatoes. I'm going to have a lot of volunteer tomatoes this year because. Hmm. 
Yeah, these cherry tomatoes. I've just been eating them like crazy. They're so good. Just use my shirt to kind of dust off any schmutz. All right, let's try one. Mmm, great. Cherry tomatoes, smaller tomatoes are a great option in Florida. They really are. I think you're going to have more success growing this type, but, you know, certain varieties. I got this from a local farm. I'm definitely going back to get them again next year. I'm going to take some seeds from this variety. I also have a Seminole tomato, but... Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Well, these are starting to get starting to get rotten. But what this tells me is I'm going to take these rotten tomatoes here and spread the seeds out on paper plate, dry them out. Seminole tomatoes is a an heirloom variety. It's an old variety, and uh, it was used actually by Seminole tribe is a vegetable and they're delicious and they grow really easily in Florida and survived everything I threw at it <sighs> my carambola tree is not one hundo right now I hear a flock coming ah reunited reunited at the roosting bar Yeah, I might move that out and do a little bit more sun. Nice carambola. I threw this Persian mulberry right in the ground. It's doing pretty well. Well, okay. Time to get on with the rest of the day. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. Also, WD, thanks for the, the comment about... Um, I haven't responded to it yet because I really have been thinking about it, which was the idea of collaborating with some other YouTube creators. Hopefully you're still on the stream here, but... Um, that's a great idea and I've been thinking about that for a while there's some people that I really admire and love their channels like uh, Justin Rhodes as an example I think his channel is incredible um, I like Callie Kim <laughs> too and, and others I mean, there's so many of them so many cool channels on on YouTube related to permaculture and growing things and I think the most fun thing for me would be to start interacting with some of these folks if they would be willing to do it. And what, there's David the Good, that's another one. Uh, yeah, so many examples, so many. Even Joe Salatin methods, um, you know, on, on and on and that idea goes. Um, there's a, oh, I can't remember his name, a guy up in New Jersey that grows fruit trees, it's so interesting too. He and his brother at a food channel. I watched that one. But yeah, I love the idea of you know, collaborating with some other permaculture, food, backyard channels. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. I just have to figure out how to get the Zoom or whatever the, the conference call thing going. I think I have all the ingredients there. I just have, would have to just figure out the last step, which is the actual, and test it out. Anyway, another great day. Hey, I hope you have a terrific day. Everything goes well for you. But probably at some point, not everything will go well. So just keep moving forward. <laughs> Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard.